Okay, I'm going to show you how to download the SVG file for the little peekaboo mouse pattern and how to upload that to Cricut and format it in the machine so that you can print with it. So first, I'm going to open the peekaboo mouse pattern. So this is the PDF and this is the little mouse that we're going to be making. A little Got them two different ways. And I'm going to scroll down until I get to the point in the pattern where it says you can download the SVG file here. And there it is. So the file is in layers and it has some translucency to it so you can see which pieces tuck behind other pieces. And I've laid it all out pretty much like you're going to see it laid out um, on your finished block and you'll see why that's important in a minute. So this is going to take it to, I've got it saved in Google Drive, and you click this little download button up here in the corner. See the little arrow going down? You click that, and that downloads it. You can see it downloaded it to my computer. So now I'm going to go ahead and close that. We're not ready for Design Space yet. I want to show you. Here's the file saved. So it's this peekaboomouse.svg. So now we're going to go into Cricut Design Space. This is my home page. And we're going to click on New Project. And I want to replace whatever I had going on in the window. And now we're going to, on this sidebar menu here, up on the left side, you want to click on Upload. And you're going to upload the image that you just downloaded. And that was peekaboomouse.svg and you want to call it, you want to tag it something so that you can find it again. So peekaboo mouse and I've called it peekaboo mouse and I'm going to save that and now I'm going to click on it and I'm going to tell it to insert the image into my design space. Now for some weird reason when you import an image into Cricut's Design Space, it imports it at whatever random size it feels like importing it at. Um, that's not the size that I created it at. That's not the size that you're going to want to make him. That's just the size that they decided to do. So the first thing you want to do is resize this guy while he's all laid out the way you're going to put them together. Otherwise you'd have to break it up and resize each individual piece and you don't want to do that. So this little mouse is about two and a half inches tall when you put them together. So I'm going up here where it says size and I'm going to go into the height block. It's locked so it'll resize it proportionally and I'm going to say 2.5 inches and hit return and it keeps the proportions right and now this is the size that you want to print him at and work with him. So the next thing you want to do is break all the pieces up so that you can move them around individually. So you want to, they, it imports it all in layers the way I created it, but they're all grouped together. So you're going to click over here where it says layers and you're going to ungroup them. So now it's got all the individual layers here. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep them named what I named them, but I make each piece a different color so it makes it easy for you to see over in the side what's happening with it. So the first thing you want to do is take anything that is the same color that, that you want to print, that you want to cut out of the same fabric and make them the same color. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to make this mouse an official color here. I'm going to make it this cactus pink and that's the mouse body and now the purple these ears here I'm going to look for the purple ears over here and you click on this little dot that's going to change the color and I want them to be the same color as the body because I'm going to cut all of those out of one color of fabric one type one pattern of fabric and the belly is going to be a different color so I'm just going to leave that the bright green for now so that got all your pieces coordinated in groups by color, and you'll see why that's important in just a minute. So now we want to do a little bit, bit of rearranging. So since we have broken up the pieces, um, actually let's not do some re... Yeah, let's first move those ears out of the way. So I'm going to go in here, and right now I'm, I've chosen the ears. 
I want to move those ears, but I want to move them individually. And right now they appear to be grouped together. So I'm going to click so that Peekaboo Mouse and both ears are highlighted. And you can see ungroup is possible. So that means I can ungroup them. And I'm going to ungroup them. And now I can move them as individual pieces. So I can use this and I can spin them so I can have them print. I know I'm going to print this in a gingham and I don't want them to be perfectly aligned with the body so I want them to be set up a little differently. So they're going to be up and down. I want to move the belly off of the body because it's going to be printed as a separate piece. And now I'm left with the body and the face and I've got some important things I need to do for this. So if I click on the face, this is all the face parts. These are eyes and a nose and some whiskers and I want to make sure all of those are grouped together. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and move them. Whoops, that moved the body. Let me undo that. Try moving just the face. Let me click on the face. Maybe that'll help me pick it. Yes, so all the face is moving together. I want it to go back where I had it, so I'm going to hit undo. Now, I need to attach the face to the body because I want the face to draw on the body. So I need to move the body. Over here you can see the body and there's the belly between the face and the body. So I need to move the body up so that it is right next to the face. And now I'm going to, I've got the face already selected and I'm going to also, whoops, I've got the face selected and now I'm going to hit shift and click on the body so that both the face and the body are all selected and I'm going to click attach. And now if I move that it's going to move all as one thing and it'll know that it's printing it on that so it's going to keep it on that mat and you'll see that in just a second. So now I think we've got everything ready to go so we're going to make it. So I've got my pieces coordinated by color. Everything that is going to cut out of the same fabric is the same color. The face is going to be written on the body, so those two are attached. Oh, and I need to change, it defaults, when it loads everything in, it loads them all in as cutting files, but I want to change all those face pieces to writing files, because I want the machine to write on it for me. So I'm clicking on Peekaboo Mouse, and you go down to the first bits here, and um, we're going to instead of scissors we're going to oh it opens up that same window that clicking on the little color did and we're going to change it right now it's a cutting file we want it to be a writing file and i'm going to do that for every one of these so this is the nose the mouth I mean, not the mouth but the nose the eyes and all six whiskers which it brings in as individual little files one more Okay, so now let me just recap and make sure that I've got everything on here that I need to do. So I've got all of the pieces that are being cut out of the same fabric are the same color. I have the writing attached to the piece that it's going to be written on and changed that to a writing file instead of a cutting file. So the body is going to be cut. If you look at the peekaboo mouse body, you can see that's got scissors there. So it's going to Right, draw the face on there and then it's going to cut the body out. So I think we are ready to go. Now I'm going to click make it and you can see what it does. So uh, we don't, let me go back one second. Let's cancel. So for some reason it brings in that block. We can just take that away. It brings in the background block. We don't need that. So now let's go back to make it. And it's got everything sorted onto different mats. And you'll see in a video, in, a, in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how it cuts them out. So everything that's one color is grouped together on this mat. And you can rearrange these pieces a little bit um, here on the actual mat layout. I just want to do this so that they take up a little bit less room so I can cut it out of a smaller piece of fabric. So this mat is ready and this mat you can see is just the belly and it's just that one piece. So I am ready to start cutting. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So if you want to make multiple copies, 
So let's say you have a 12 by 12 inch piece of fabric and you want to cut a whole bunch of mice out at once. Go up here where it says project copies and you can tell it you want to, let's say we want to cut out eight. So we'll do eight and it will automatically duplicate all of those for you on the mat. And if you still want to rearrange pieces, you can rearrange pieces, um, but it lays it out pretty well when you're doing it that way. And then you can see that it also duplicated eight of the bellies. So it'll cut all of those pieces out at once. So you only have to load everything up in your machine the one time. So now I'm going to show you how this cuts out when we just do one. I'm just going to do one in the, in the demo. So after you get the pieces arranged however you want them on the board, and the belly, I'm just going to leave it as is, you go down here and you click continue. And it's going to think for a second. And now the first thing it's going to ask you to do is choose your material. And for fabric that's backed with a fusible adhesive, I've found that it works well to use medium fabrics like cotton. So now it's going to tell you to load your tools and the mat. And since this first guy has drawing on it as well, I'm going to load two tools. I'm going to load this, let me get the mouse off of there so it doesn't have other markings coming up. I'm going to load the black pen and I'm going to load the rotary blade and I'm going to put my fabric on the mat and then load the mat up. So first, here's my machine. And I've already got the rotary blade loaded in because that's pretty much the only blade that I have used that has cut well so far. But I need to put my pen in here. So I took the cap off, open this up, and there's a little arrow on the pen. And you want to load it into the thing and push it down until it snaps in and that arrow disappears. And then you're just going to close that. And that part is ready to go. And now I'm going to take my fabric. So I've got this is a three inch square of the fabric I want to use for the body and the ears. I've got it backed with fusible adhesive. And now I'm going to do something that's opposite what the directions tell you to do. They all tell you to load things face down, but I want you to load it fabric side up because it's going to transfer the markings to the fabric for you. And for the pen to write on the fabric, the fabric needs to be face up. So I'm setting this up. This mat is sticky. So I'm setting this up in the top corner of the mat, right where that diagram, I'm going to go back to the diagram here. Nope, I'm well, I can zoom in here. See, it shows it cutting out of that top, top corner there. So that's where I'm putting my fabric. Back over here. So I've got my fabric stuck down. And now I need to load it into the machine. And there are these little guides on each side. And I want to get it underneath both guides and push it back as far as it goes on my own. And then there's a flashing light here. Sorry about that reflection there. But you can see the flashing light that's telling that's the load mat button. And now it's loading the mat in. Once it's got the mat loaded in, it's telling me everything loaded okay. And now the cricket button is flashing and that's to tell it go. So go. And now, drawing first. So it'll always draw the bits on first. So it's drawing the face and the whiskers. And I don't actually usually stand here and watch it. Usually I go and tidy some things up in my room while it's doing its thing. But for the video I wanted to show you so you can see it's drawn the little face on there. And now it's just getting the rotary blade set. And now it's going to cut the body and both ears. And you could actually set a few different squares up if you wanted to do different colors, but do them all at one time. You could set up those three inch squares and just lay out on your layout, on the design space layout, and tell it you're going to cut, you're duplicating that image all those times, and that'll work just fine. Now it's done cutting and once again the load and unload the mat button is flashing so I push that button the mat comes out and now you peel it away so I usually start peeling up in this corner I'm trying to do this one-handed so I'm also holding the camera so we 
we've got. I left some paper behind, that's okay. So now I'm gonna peel up the actual pieces. So I've got the mouse body and I left the paper behind, that's okay because the back has the fusible adhesive on it. So now I just don't even need to peel that off. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the ears. Peel off one ear, get the second ear, and now I'll just clean this off. And now, so we've got the body piece, all the markings are already transferred, the fusible adhesive is on the back, it's neatly cut and ready to go, and I've got the two ears that go with it. They also have the fusible adhesive already on the back, and now I need to cut the belly. So back to the screen here. So you can see here that it's, it's got a little check mark because it has cut mat number one. Now we're gonna work on mat number two, which is just the belly. I don't need to do anything to change or rearrange that. I don't need the pen this time. I'm gonna leave the rotary blade in there and I just need to put the fabric on the mat and this time it's a solid pink. I'm gonna put it up in that corner just like I did before. Stick it down a little bit. And now we're going to put it in the, the machine. So I've got it underneath both of those little guides. And I'm going to push the, flash, the flashing uh, load mat button. And now I need to push go. So I'm noticing here that I forgot to take my pen out before. I need to remember to take my pen out, otherwise that tip's gonna dry out. So I'll do that in just a second. But now it's already done. So I'm going to, once again, push the load and unload the mat button. Take it out. Before I forget, I'm gonna pull that latch, take my pen out, cap it, because they're not cheap. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna peel off the backing. And then I'm going to peel off the little belly. I left the paper behind, but that's okay, because there you can see it's got the adhesive on it. And I'm going to have that ready to go. So next up, I'm going to show you how to fuse this mouse down.